y'all, it's the Blake and Jason Podcast, episode number 21, or the Jason Blake Podcast, podcast, whatever you guys want to call it. It is Friday, June 5th, 2020. Today is my Aunt Janelle's birthday. Happy birthday, Janelle! Happy birthday, Janelle! You know what's good, dog? Yeah. Love Janelle. She lives in Indiana? Yes. Awesome. Good news. Happy birthday. Hope you had a great day. It's Friday, TGIF. Thank goodness. Had a long week, Monday to Thursday working. Had the day off. Got my truck serviced. Uh, Anomaly after. Yes. Went over last week when we went to Tennessee. Or uh, two weeks ago when we went to Tennessee. But, uh, yes. And uh, we are here. We made it through the week, thank goodness. It was Friday. Went golfing day with my boy Matt at uh, Stonecrest. God, brain fart. Stonecrest, yeah, it poured on us the first like three or four holes in it. Then it uh, cleared out for us, which is good. We're going to play again uh, Sunday at Raven Rock. Should be a good time. So. I went and ate for the first time in a restaurant today. Wow. Went and had hibachi. People have masks on? Uh, the workers, the servers, everybody. Well, that's good. good deal, good but deal. But as for everybody else inside, I should have brought my mask, but I forgot. Oh, it's all good. But, I uh, went last minute. While I was on the golf course, she called me and said she's going hibachi. I was like, oh, you got to bring me some rice shrimp and steak and she did that was huge and I ate it as soon as I got here it was awesome I ate it and it went like right through me I don't know what it is about hibachi but MSG makes (laughs) makes shiitake and good I always say (laughs) but uh yeah we are back here still on the Monday Friday schedule hope you all start with us and end with us you know how it is hit that like and subscribe button shout out Dustin Boyd for the music as always Debo Beats on YouTube, Debo underscore 606 on Instagram. Follow, like his stuff, subscribe to him. He's always got, he's coming out with new beats always. Send it to me all the time, I love it. It's never gets old. And shout out Heath and JR on the uh, Hell Podcast. H A I L. Yep. Hey, go like him on Facebook, Hell Podcast. Their episode's awesome. I love it. And uh, what else we got here? Oh, yeah. We got to talk about what we watched uh, right here on the Fire Stick. Uh, we started. We started it last night. Well, no, I'm not the first one. Well, just a minute ago, also too, I guess. But uh, we started it last night, and then she went to bed, and I, I ended up finishing it. And yeah, then, went uh, on me. Yeah, because it was crazy. I had to see what happened. And then uh, she, uh, after I went golfing day and we got back, we finished it on the part she left off, and uh, it's called Ma, M A, and it stars. Uh, what is it called? Uh, it stars Octavia Spencer. You know, she's an amazing African-American actress. Uh, she was in The Help. That's also a great movie. And uh, it's about... Ma is about a middle-aged woman who uh, befriends these Hello. teen... Cat's over here going. Hello days. But uh, she uh, is about a middle-aged woman who befriends these teenagers, buys them alcohol, lets them party in her basement. She used to go to high school with all uh, their parents. She was bullied. Crazy twist to it. Awesome storyline. Y'all gotta check it out. It also wow. has Juliette Lewis in it, who was in a million different movies. Yeah. Blake's favorite. Uh, old school. Mm-hmm. She was in it there. It's hilarious. What was the line you told me the other day that she said? She was like, uh, her and her husband were uh, getting divorced. Her husband ended up being like the godfather. In, no, uh, they wasn't get. Oh, they were just dating. They were, they were, they were just dating, or yeah. they were breaking up. And she's like, I'm really sorry. And she like hit a cigarette. And she's like, I really didn't mean to. <laughs> I thought she's sad. I should blow the smoke out. It's hilarious. But uh, I love old school. You gotta check it out too. But uh, let's see what else we got here. We also watched on uh, the Fire Stick just uh, right before this. It's called the uh, Paranormal Activity, the marked one, the marked ones. It's another lost uh, footage genre, you know, like the handheld camera angles. And it's another branch that spins okay, off... Peter. Yeah, it's another branch that spins off the uh, Paranormal Activity movies, and it's it was scary, dude. Which was great. I like all those. Mm-hmm. This movie, what was great about it, is it is basically a, a survival manual. You know, kids need to learn about the devil and that he's real. <laughs> Run to Jesus, y'all. If you're yes. in a sticky situation, just start praying. Be like, Jesus, come help me. Especially what's going on in the country right yeah. now. You can see that. That's the, what everybody the needs real, to watch. Dude. Yeah, for real. I always say, I believe in I believe in God. If there's definitely a God, there's definitely a devil, too. And, I think but, we've seen a lot of the devil. And I think because everybody right now, 
we got rid of God, you know, mm -hmm. didn't do everything like we used to, and basically yeah. got rid of him out of the land, and now the devil's taking over. That's why all this corona it's thing insane, and dude. racist stuff and all this stuff's going on. Yeah. So. But Panama TV, the Mark ones, uh, I cover my eyes sometimes, but I, I, I got jump scared like crazy. All those jump scares you see in the movies, like it's, and it's Blake awesome. Blake is the funniest person to watch a scary movie. If he does this, he takes his mm -hmm. thumbs and puts them over his eyes and takes his pinkies and put them over his ears and it's then he'll true. do his thumbs over his ears and cover them up with his pinkies uh it's sometimes it's real scary i did that once in this movie whatever you Paranormal do Jimmy, the marked ones uh yeah it's got an awesome twist towards the end too so you ought to check that out uh all the paranormal activities have scared me, dude. Like it's crazy like well they're, they're always good, said and that's why i enjoy them yeah i always said the rings and the grudges always freak me out with the hair in the face stuff i don't know what that's always scared me all the scenes building up to when those girls jump out and stuff like it's wild and then all the paranoia too like the first one you know we always like just like the blair witch back in the day we thought it was real you know for real and you seen the main actress on letterman right well oh Maybe not. and that <laughs> was the same with that um what was it the crap those movies that are really good the Hell House or whatever. Oh, Hell House, yeah, we talked about Those it a few episodes like, ago. Those were like, the first time we ever watched them. They were like them, lost footage genre too. It was, angle. Chase was telling us about it, and the way that mm -hmm. he was telling about it, it made me think that, oh, this is this is real, this is legit, like almost a documentary, but not yeah. really, and I was like, oh, dang, this really happened, and then I realized that it didn't, but I mean, it was awesome, and then to it think about wild, it in that dude. way it was, was crazy. Scary. Hell Very House. scary. Hell House, LLC, like it's. Not like a, a movie that was like in theaters and like a, across the country big time, but... Kind of like, like the paranormal activity. Yeah, though. yeah. But it, when it came out, it's like, like I said, the lost, the lost footage genre, you know, the camera angles. And like, they're setting up a haunted house. It's, it's We're going to bring that back. We need to bring that back. We're gonna Dude, if I had enough money stuff. to create a haunted house, like, it would it'd be awesome. But, uh... Well, maybe we yes. will one day. Oh, and i seen on, uh, this is switching subjects, but, uh, shout out, uh... Kentucky, you know, that's where I'm from. She's from Virginia, obviously. But uh, this Kentucky uh, singer song Stur Sturgill Simpson, Simpson, Sturgill Simpson performed a concert at the famous uh, Ryman Auditorium in Nashville in front of an empty place. You know, the Ryman, like mm -hmm. where they, like the, that place where like every country star ever like uh, performed there and stuff. And yeah, and, like I guess still cause COVID-19, but that's still, it was still wild to see. I saw pictures on Twitter. That was where they had the Grand Ole Opry. Mm -hmm. It showed like a picture from behind and it looked like a sound check, but I read it was filmed. Uh, I seen on uh, Twitter and uh, nowadays, because you know if you didn't film, it didn't happen, right? Basically, that's <laughs> terrible. But uh, yeah, he was. Uh, what was cool? He was wearing a big Kentucky sweatshirt too, and uh, he's got some awesome songs, man. I always said he sounded like Waylon Jennings. You gotta check him out, Stur Sturgill Simpson. He's he's so good, dude. He's a uh, I think like the first time I heard him is like uh, my buddy was telling me, I can't remember what buddy it was, because there's a, a, a bunch of buddies that uh, like to listen to him though, but uh, tell me like look at this YouTube video and it showed him like one of the one of those YouTube videos where they do like uh, they have like interviews with the, the artist and they let him perform live and he was performing live there and it was it was awesome and that song was crazy but it was wild man oh and. Uh, Speaking of all the crazy stuff that's going on in, uh, around the world right now, uh, well, a beautiful sight to see uh, today, uh, the head uh, Kentucky football coach, uh, Mark Stoops, and his top assistant coach, uh, Vince Marrow, led the Kentucky football team in the streets protesting in downtown Lexington today, Lexington, Kentucky. They all had their Black Lives Matter shirts on. I love seeing that dude. And I love that coach, Coach Mark Stoops. It was awesome. I got to shake his hand uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. The night after Kentucky beat Virginia Tech in the Belt Bowl on New Year's Eve day, that was one of the best days ever. You know, to shake his hand and then seeing him out there with the football team leading down the streets uh, protesting. That's that's awesome. That's I see you don't see many coaches. I ain't seen other any other coaches do that. That was that was awesome, dude. Taking pictures and like, I mean, it was great. They had the whole team with them. That's wild, dude. That's that's awesome. I haven't seen another football coach do that. I seen something awesome on uh, Facebook the other day. What was that? And it was explaining that um, 
why we shouldn't say all lives matter, even though all lives do matter. Mm -hmm. The main thing that we need to be saying right now is legit that black lives matter. Seriously, And babe. it explained it, um, it was Luke 15, I believe, and it um, explained how, you know, God had a hundred sheep and the one went astray, and so he left the 99 to go get the one. And so the 99 said, well, what about us? Don't we matter? And mm -hmm. God said, of course you do, but this one is the one that is in trouble. This one is yeah. the one that's lost, you know. So it's instead of us saying the all my Like, yeah, all you matter, matter, but the stuff that's going on right now, we got to make sure black lives matter, too. Because, yeah. like, because I mean, all lives do matter. But I mean, right now, look, the main look, focus look is at, we got to help these people. You can look at the percentages, man. Like, the people, the brutality is, like, it's so much harder on a black man and it's so but, or a black woman and too i've seen i saw a video of a police brutality on a black woman too and i was like oh my gosh man like but we also <sighs> watched the video on facebook and what, what was that girl's name oh Candace this uh, Owens, i believe yeah i don't know she talked too much about that though i mean well i mean she had an opinion and yeah she, she was just talking about george floyd and if you want to look up Candace Owens live Facebook video, you can, but I don't want to get into too but much that, detail about that. But that's not what I'm trying to, I'm not trying to I know, to but what names, she said about George Floyd was kind of controversial. I mean, well, I don't know about it. She had more statistics about things, not just, you know, based on him. Pretend like his name isn't even in there and just listen to what she's saying. Yeah. She was trying to explain something and she was saying that the statistics isn't as terrible as it has been seen or something like that. I can't quite remember what it was. But But yeah, there's conspiracy theories out there about everything. I mean, I don't want to say no names, but you just you can just, I mean you can look up everything about the conspiracy theories about how this started. And, and that's the thing is where we do film everything crazy, all the time. Man. That's why people are able to get so influenced by the wrong people. Like maybe you're influenced by somebody who's really not a good person and you think that they're great or you know we're able to be influenced by these people because like you said everybody puts everything on the internet everybody it's everywhere, films everything it's everywhere right. and i mean we're kind of doing the same thing we're filming this but i mean you know yeah. everybody else is maybe we yeah. can talk about it too now, i saw uh <clears throat> many uh african-american uh, celebrities uh, with big platforms you know all kinds of followers and uh, fo a big fan base and stuff, and uh, they were saluting a bunch of uh, white citizens out there in the street protesting hard, uh, just like the black community. And uh, that's what we really need: both sides finally standing up and saying enough is enough. Because I really hope we get back on track and uh, get back to becoming the greatest country on earth. I mean, I know we can do this. We just can't ever give up. Like I seen a video, them talking about somebody talking about how it's got to be. Uh, you gotta. It's, it comes down to the voting the right people into your local uh, governments to write down these bills. Because I mean, we can protest all we want to and uh, raise all the crap we can and try to lead with our voices and stuff. But what it really comes down to is getting those bills wrote down and getting this uh, figured out right and figuring out who should be cops and why they should be cops and just training. Like I seen the statistic also that, that it required. Being a barber requires more hours to get certified than it does to be a police officer. Like you need That's how it is you need fifteen hundred hours to be a barber, and it's like half that to be a cop. Like it's, and, they're, and, they're, and they're that? six they're six months in the camp at cop, and but fifteen hundred hours to be a barber. Like, well, did you actually crazy. look at what the number was for the cops? I mean, really, they can't, I know you know, like, I know practice it's like, I know it's with like six so many hours. And they're like, actually doing their jobs. So I know really, it's like, yeah, I know it's like six months training, but it's like hard. Uh, it's like hard. Like, you know, it's like military type training. You know, they're yelling at you and stuff. I know it's different than being a barber, but it's just how crazy how the hours were. Like, it's more hours than it is, like, to be a cop, but. It makes sense, though. Really, I know it because does. Because it, it, being a barber, you're actually practicing what you're doing. If you did that as a cop, I mean, you need to be getting paid for it because you could like, be losing your life. I know some of these cops are good cops. And, like, you know, like, they're, I mean, they're out there, you know, 
fighting every day for life, they're they're scared too. Just That's like the, the thing, system. though. Like, is, they is pull their is, gun real quick. We need to come up with a training system or something that make, makes them not as scared to pull their gun so quick or be scared like well, they have to beat this person provoked. or they're going to die. Maybe they're being provoked and we don't know about it. Maybe that's the part that doesn't get shown on mm -hmm. those video clips or something. I mean, I'm not speaking up for any side or any, well, I'm for both sides uh -huh. or whatever, but the thing is, is we got to quit saying everything as, you know, these cops or these police people. It's not the whole cop. It's I know. Not I know. I, I'm not saying it's the cops. I'm just saying some, some of these cops are so terrified to lose their life. But that their quickest, their first thought is, this guy's not even doing it. Well, wouldn't you be terrified to lose yeah, your I, life? Yeah, I'm, so I'm saying, but it's just, it's a sticky situation. It's so hard to figure out. Dude. Like, it's hard, the training and everything. I know it's like, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. I think me and you are seeing two totally different sides to what no, this conversation I, we're, we're, is. No, I know we're seeing the same side. I'm just saying it's 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 hard to figure out. Like, I know I know what you're saying. Like, yes, I would be terrified if I was a cop. Yeah, I'd be terrified to lose my life. You never know what somebody's gonna do. Well, I mean, I think a cop has every right to have their gun out if they think they're in yes. a situation where they, they, they need it. They have the so, right to get their gun out, but they need to have the total mindset of when to pull that trigger and which is the right time to pull That's that the thing is is don't don't blame it on cops. I'm not blaming I'm not, I'm not I don't think it that it cops. is cops at all. It's individual people and if we don't realize that that this one individual person made this terrible decision you know, as instead of saying, "Oh, the cops made this bad decision," I'm or not the cops saying that, did dude. This. I'm not. I know there I know is millions that, of people. But good I'm just trying to make sure that you know yes. everybody knows. I'm that just saying there is few cops out there that have the mindset when they pull their gun, they gotta shoot right then, and there, we gotta think of some way to like where they can pull their gun out, but some way not to like. Is this person really threatening me? I don't think that that's the or case. Or are they, or are they just scared like me? Because like, if they're really, if they're, some people like these guys, like this one guy was reaching for his ID, and this cop, I seen a video, just unloaded a clip in him, and, he's, and it was just like, I don't know. maybe. Like what? That cop was provoked. We don't know. We didn't see that side. Some maybe there were words said. Maybe that guy was trying to pretend like he was gonna shoot. You know, people do the cop by, or suicide by cop all the time. I mean, I'm not saying anything. I'm not, oh. but I'm just trying to explain and make sure that people understand that, you know, there's two sides to everything. Yeah, you know. I you know, know but I still. <laughs> but, yeah, but, yeah, all right, yeah, this is not, like, where we want to go on our podcast or anything, but, you know, we just... It needs to be talked about, you know, it needs to be... <clears throat> I heard on the radio today If we got just the smallest platform, people listen to us, then it'd be fine just to say something. Because, I mean, being silent is so bad, I feel like. I believe it was the mayor um, that was in Missouri and maybe a mayor in New York, or maybe it wasn't a mayor, I don't remember, but mm -hmm. there was obviously an incident in New York where a 75-year-old man I saw failed. that video. I saw I didn't that video. See the video. This this seventy five year old man. It's graphic video. It was on Instagram too. It's on Instagram where hey you uh. It's fun. It's on Instagram Cats where like if you click it, all it says it. Uh, this video has graphic content. So you got to uh, you have to re uncover it yourself. And once I hit it, it shows all right. This man was walking up to this, these cops were walking down the sidewalk, and this old man walked up to him. He's just like talking to him normal. And there's these two cops in front of him, and there's a third cop in the back. The third cop in the back steps forward and pushes this old man, like, really hard. And he trips and falls back and nails his head on the concrete. And, like, he starts bleeding out of his ear. And these people film are like, what are you doing? He's bleeding out of his ear. you got to call an ambulance. And the camera crew was like, uh, we have an on-site EMT. And, like, I guess this guy's grandson or his, his friend, he's walking up to him. The cop's trying to restrain him, and he's trying to get to him. And it was a very sad situation. I mean, that guy... That 75 year old man just walked up, being perfectly fine, just like talking normal to him, wasn't aggressive, wasn't even like That's touching him, thing. touching nothing. But the third cop came behind and just pushed him out of nowhere. We and don't he know what was said. There's always a chance that they were being provoked. We don't know. There's always two sides but to that every video, story. Dude, but I he mean, wasn't doing nothing. He wasn't doing nothing. That's he was terrible, just, he was man. just talking to him, and the third cop came right, right in between these two cops and pushed him as hard as he can and fell back. And he nailed his head. And you can see right there in the video, he started bleeding out of his ear. And I was like, oh my gosh. 
Oh my gosh! Like, well, why did he go up to the police in the first place? I don't they were understand. walking towards him, but they, he was just like just talking to him. I mean, he wasn't in the aggressive. He was kind was of slow. Was he the and only he was, one around? And there was a few behind, but like they were like ten yards away, and he was just like slowly backing up. All of a sudden, that cop pushed him, and then I was like, oh my goodness, we're sitting here trying to stop this, and it's it's happening right here again during the protest. But you know, something. And he wasn't are provoked. So I'm not, and I don't mean to say that mean at all. But that I mean, wasn't staged. That poor old man got hurt bad. But I hope he's okay. And I, I hope in, so too. I, I pray for that. And I saw in the comments that video. Family. I saw in the comments of that video on Instagram that somebody said that it happened in London to an old man that he ended up dying. Cops pushing an old man down in London and he ended up dying because of it. That's crazy. Oh man, it's just sticky, bad dude. Situations. Sticky, bad situation. Uh, pray for our country. Pray, pray, pray for, pray for our pray country. Pray for that man. old man. It's it's sad, man. That I, is I hope it gets better. Oh, and I'll, speaking of the York. protests and stuff, I also saw on Twitter that the Black Panthers are back. You know, not the movie. You know, if you saw, uh, I saw, Gump. I saw a video of their group uh, protesting with their guns around them. And uh, if you seen Forrest Gump, yes, there's a scene with the Black Panthers, Forrest Gump. If you don't know the Black Panthers, there was an anti-racism activist group in the 60s and 70s that stood up and fought for equal rights for the black community. They were a big part of the massive change we got in the old days to let us live with our fellow brothers and sisters today in peace. And uh, good to see them back out there fighting the good fight, praying to God this country gets back on track and uh, everyone gets back on the same page and in this cop racism crap because, uh, you know, you hate to see this country in a funk like this, but the Black Panthers out there, I mean, the Black Panthers made a big change back in the day. And we just got to learn to teach people better. You guys got to teach your kids. We all got to teach your children. Yes, it starts with the younger generation. Just like sure. Starcy. Starsky. Oh my gosh. Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I don't know where Starsky came Crosby, Stills, and Nash? Yeah, teach your children. There are people in this world who truly believe that they are superior to black people for some reason. And, that, and that is because that's mind. how they were raised to think. If they could have some education or an insight or something to happen to where they could see that we are all the same. I mean, the skin color does not matter. We're all humans. We're all the same. We all have feelings. We all are battling our own battles within ourselves. We really don't need to cause problems for anybody else because we all struggle just being ourselves sometimes. Yep. So, I mean, it's all crazy. It's all crazy. Man, it's just... <sighs> sucks to see it, man. Because I mean, I got so we got we got so, we both got so many so many amazing friends that are black and African American, and it's just you love them to death and you hate to see this dude. Because it's just like I mean, I know we're two we're two white people here talking about it. I mean, we don't know what it's like at all, and never will. And it's I just hope it's it gets equaled out and everything is a okay, and we don't have to send military in the streets to fight our citizens, I mean, because all the bad stuff that's going down, all the people that's, all these crazy people that are burning these businesses down when it's supposed to be peaceful protest is what really makes change, and if you acting all crazy and burning stuff down, they're going to see that and be like, well, I mean, why would, I mean, it's just... We all need to pray. And I mean, if that, yep. that would be the best thing that those protesters anywhere could possibly do, is all get together and pray. Pray for this situation to get better because the only way that it is going to get better is if God comes back into our country, into our lives because yeah. we rejected him and now the devil's got a hold of this country. It's crazy. <laughs> Heck yeah, kitty. Gosh, our cats are <laughs> wild enough. <laughs> They're psychos. Yeah, I want to say like, uh, there's a, uh, let's see, where am I at here? Yeah, there have been great protests in the past after terrible incidents with, with police brutality, but this one is really, really great. Like something about like everybody, like everybody's coming together right now, and like I truly believe it's uh, doing something too. It's like I hate it takes a bad situation to make uh, stuff like this happen, but everyone is coming together slowly but surely. Like you know, you see like back in the day, you know, you see protests and like you see big protests, you know, the Tra Trevon Martin and stuff. And all those, and like everybody come together there. But there's something about this one that's really like picking up moment. I've never seen a protest and like uh, 
everybody out in the streets like this pick up this much momentum. Like you've seen them before on uh, CNN stuff. There's protests out there. It's like yeah, little things happen. But this one, it's the biggest cities in the country, and it's thousands and thousands and thousands of people, and it's it's really special. Like and it's. Not just even the biggest cities. There's places. But yeah, all over I mean, all over. Right? Even like Lexington is a big one. city. Exactly. Wise Virginia, you know, predominantly probably white, I had a protest, and it's, and it's awesome, man. It's absolutely amazing, and I just hope that it, the momentum sticks with all the way till November, because you know it's 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 the voting year. It's 2020, a presidential election and stuff's coming up. So I hope get out there and vote in your uh, local uh, voting uh, races and stuff, your local governments, your city councils and all that, and got to get those bills passed to fix this, dude, because it's rough, man. It's really rough, and you hate to see these videos every year coming out. And, like, Rodney King was, what, 92? And it's now still happening. What is this? 2002, 2012, 20, 18 years later, like, something's got to change, bro. And it's crazy if you all ever watch the, what was it, OJ versus the people? OJ or versus the, the people? The people versus OJ. You season. watch the documentary one oh or the one gosh. with the Cuban Gooden Jr. Uh, playing uh, OJ Simpson. And, and this is absolutely terrible. But they use their race to get out of a murder trial, which is terrible. And I don't think that it, it was, a, I think the fact was they knew that OJ killed his wife evidence against it that they had to flip it into a race thing as them saying that he killed this white woman and usually you know like black. the police brutality and stuff you see a black man going against the police i mean it's the chances aren't good and it's horrible but it was a, a good thing that they did but the case in that way OJ, because you know it opened so innocent. many eyes oj was not innocent it was good because through the trial i'm saying it was innocent well Everybody knows. It showed that, you know, they were <laughs> showing the racism, you know, and that was a good thing because that made progression for years to come. But the fact of the matter was, was he was being tried for a murder trial. He murdered two people. And Supposedly. that just kind of got sure. swept under the rug and t changed, which, you know, is terrible for the family and friends of those two people that were murdered because they didn't Lord get justice. Mercy. You know, but you see, change. like the 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 daughters or the the woman who got killed, uh, her parents in the courtroom. It's just so sad. But and the the man, his. Oh no, yeah, the man's parents too. Were, yeah, yeah that's right. They were there too, and it's just that was. But it showed that it OJ, had a that OJ story is Dominique just Dunn's dad. The biggest trial in history on camera, on live TV. Like it's insane they, they film stuff like that like it was like jeffrey or uh, it was like uh the ted bundy trial you know it was on camera it was like real big and oj just swept that one out of the way like I mean, millions and millions and millions of people were watching from the bronco on the highway to everybody hugging him when he was, got when it's innocent so it well what i was trying to talk about was it was cool because it had dominic dunn's dad in it his daughter, Dominique Dunn, mm -hmm. which was the older, oldest daughter yeah. on the Poltergeist, was murdered by her boyfriend. Oh, wow. Her ex-boyfriend. He was crazy, and I think actually he got off pretty light with it, so it was kind yeah. of a disappointment, and he was there in support Oh, yeah, of the that's right. Family. Yeah, he was there. That's crazy, yeah. That was wild, dude. But, uh, man, I hope everything gets better, dude. I hope, uh... This country comes together. Look at Tigger in the camera. Hey Tigger, how's Tigger, it going? Tigger, hey, how's it going, on, buddy? She's that's gonna be a good clip right there for, She's super for cute. the YouTube. I need to check her out. Yes, but uh, I want you all to know we're on YouTube and we 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 are gonna have a vlog tomorrow. We're not doing anything on Saturday tomorrow, so we're gonna do something. We're gonna put it out. We got, gotta quit being lazy. We're, I know. I got you all vlog last uh, Monday of us uh, acting like baseball players, which we're terrible at. But I used to be good. Oh, yeah, 04. In like uh, the third grade, I, was, I killed it. That I was, was good awesome. in uh, Little League, you know, I won Little League Championship. Yeah, I was awesome in Little TMD, League. TMD, baby. Quit playing. But uh, yeah, it was a fun time.
But, uh, yes, everybody, this has been episode number 21 of the Blake and Jessa podcast, or the Jess and Blake podcast, whatever you want to call it. I know this conversation got deep. I know this conversation might be uh, something that most people might agree, disagree with or agree with, but our opinions are strictly our opinions. We speak for ourselves, no one else. Opinions are like buttholes. Everybody's got one. Everybody's got one. Yes, but uh, this has been the Blake and Jessa podcast, man. Episode number 21. Hope you're back with us on Monday. We'll see you then. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Ring the bell over here. Get a notification every time we post a video. And we're still on uh, all our podcasts. If you can't watch right now, check it out on uh, <clears throat> Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts. And Blakey1212 on YouTube. Get some Blake podcast. Love, peace, and jiggery. Peace.